Well, you know, I don't know if you heard about this, but um, the Hellman uh, Foundation, they're, um, they're good. Good, good friends of the, of the school and have donated to us and, and helped us out numerous times. Um, I thought that was a really, really sweet thing. They basically said, like, well, we can't do our amazing free concert in the park that we do every year with Hardly Strictly and instead are now basically trying to help artists and venues. I think it's wonderful. I think that it's, you know, so needed. And, uh, you know, just I thought that was so generous of them and really smart and something that I'm sure a lot of people are very, very grateful for. You know, I, I think that's the great thing about San Francisco. I don't know what your experience has been in the city during this, but mine has been so positive and I'm so, you know, happy to live here. So to see that, to see them make that donation to the music community, I thought was just wonderful. And I hope that you know, the people who really need it um, are the ones who, who get the money and it can help them kind of get through this. Because, I mean, art's so important, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Music is so important. And in San Francisco, it's like, you just don't want to lose all these artists. You don't want, like, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of people moving out of the city because it's so, you know, it's so expensive. And I'm, I'm hoping that part of what happens with all of this is that, you know, rent rents go down, which it seems like that's happening. And hopefully more artists can move back in. But you sure don't want to lose the artists who are here right now. No, and then the venues for them too. I mean, I I, I attended a Zoom watch thing um, last weekend uh, for DNA Lounge and made a donation to them. And uh, you know, I've made a yeah. donation to uh, uh, the Independent. You know, I mean, I, I would love to see um, more of those kinds of things so that we don't lose some of the the smaller um, venues that have had such. You know, like I, I can imagine the Fillmore is not going to go down. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's a that's a piece of history that people just are not going to allow. Yeah. But then, you know, something like the chapel or. Uh, Absolutely. They're, I mean, they're so key. They're such a huge, important part of um, the city. And I think all of us have had like, you know, such important experiences at these venues and like see bands that I remember seeing St. Paul and the Broken Bones at the chapel and just being like this is like just it's like it's it literally like going to church you know and it was it's it's funny i think they're from alabama and you know they grew up in the church in the south and where like it's like you know a million degrees and in in that room because it was it was packed it was a million degrees you were just like sweating and they're just like so insane and so creative and you know just the energy um, on stage was just so like you just you felt you were there with them you know you felt like you understood their experience and kind of how they grew into the musicians that they were from, you know, being in the chapel and seeing that. And like, that doesn't, like those experiences that you have in these smaller rooms, like you can't like replicate them, you know? So absolutely. Like saving rooms like that is, is very, very important. Well, you know, in a weird time to that, I, I remember seeing the OCs at the chapel because, you know, they used yeah. to do all those, that, you know, they would do these uh, residencies, one of the greatest bands to see. And they're yeah. so fun. And it just reminded me that I had tickets to see him at August Hall. <laughs> I know, I know. It, it's just, yeah, you know, there's so many things like that. It's, I, 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 it, I, had, I don't, I mean, all these, sh like, we were kind of talking about it earlier, but, like, all of the shows that, like, we have on our calendars and that we were looking forward to and that aren't happening, uh, it, they're, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, because those are kind of, like, your escapes and those reminders, like, for me, who works, you know, I've been a music fan my whole life and it's such a huge part of who I am and to get to work in the music industry and to promote these bands that I love and then to, you know, kind of get caught up in it sometimes. Like, you know, when you do something every day, you kind of like forget about the magic because you're just like grinding numbers and grinding deals and all these different things. And then you go to the show and you're like, oh yeah, this is why I do it. <laughs> and it's just like those little moments of, of that kind of reminder. And so you miss that, you know, you miss that. I think as we're missing a lot of things um, in the time that we're in, you know, you, you miss your friends, you miss hugging your friends, you miss, you know, like all those things. It's like kind of like going to a concert is the same thing. It's like that, like kind of like yeah. sound hug, <laughs> if you will. And you know, you've, you've, you've told me some really sweet, sweet and wonderful stories. You were the first one that told me about um, the, uh, the Bridge School Benefit pre-party over at um oh uh, yeah at neil young's house mm -hmm. and uh that, that to me you know i was has always said like as a musician and as an artist um you know people i was like you know had if you could get one dream gig or what would what would be your ultimate gig and you know people some people would say like oh coachella or glastonbury or something like that and i would always say bridge school benefit because it's such a it was such a special thing yeah. 
you know, it didn't matter how many millions of records you sold or whatever. It wasn't about that. Like if you were a part of that lineup, it was because Neil, you know, like it, it was, it was just like such a special thing. And then you telling me about the party that, we, that they would have every year at his house. Yeah. You, I it was a very, it's a very like family feel like it, you know, he is, I think the whole experience was to like, you know, be really grateful to the artists who came and donated their time, you know, uh, for, for the event, for the benefit. And, you know, it was, it was always this, uh, like it was, it's a, it would be a two day event every year. And there were always a specialist day of the year because it, like nobody had any ego at bridge school. Like, you know, you have some of the biggest artists in the world and everybody's just how you have like, you, you know, Eddie better like running around with a clipboard trying to like help organize what's going on. Like, you know, it's like, it's just like crazy things that you just don't see normally. And, and everybody was just so generous with their energy and their time and, it was, you know, really special to even get to witness it, you know, uh, and then to see some of the shows, like some of the, like, uh, like back played, I don't know, I'm going to say like maybe like four years ago or something like that. And he did a bunch of songs off of Sea Change, which is one of my favorite back records. Like, I love that record so much. And I think maybe other people wanted to like hear some of like, you know, the jams, but like, I love Sea Change. So I was just like geeking out and it's like, for me, I never got to see him play a show off that record. So I was so excited to hear like a bunch of those songs um, all played kind of together. And it was like, you know, those are the kinds of things that you see at Bridge School that you don't see anywhere else. Arcade Fire did, Arcade Fire did this insane uh, set where Wynn told this story how he had a dream about writing a Neil Young song and then Neil Young came out and did the song with them and it was just like a song like he had he like he woke up and he like wrote the song down and then he asked Neil if he would come and do the song with them and he, they did and it was just like so and it's just things that you just aren't going to see anywhere else you know like it's just like so special I don't know like Bridge School will forever be one of those memories that you're just like so lucky to have anybody who's gone to the show or been involved in it like you know they're just it's it's unbelievable it really was special. I mean, the fact that the, they, it was such a diverse grouping of artists and playing things in different yeah. ways and the sharing of, of the stage with the kids and, and yeah. you know, the covers and the guest appearances. It was, it really did seem like, you know, like you mentioned the family thing. That's why I was said it was such a special thing. I, you know, I, I'd seen it many, gone many, many times over many, many years. Um, and I, one of the, the ones that I remember most vividly was Bright Eyes. Oh yeah. Bright Eyes played. And what I thought was so sweet and so just like, again, heartwarming, my arm here is standing up right now, just talking about it, was, um, was Connor set the band up to face the kids. Oh, and, that's awesome. And he, and it was just the coolest, you know, cause it, he's like, I'm gonna play for them, you know? And yeah. they're, they're totally getting into it. And he did that song, True Blue, uh, mm -hmm. which is basically about being a kid and, and the color blue. And it's just the sweetest thing. I just remember being so moved by it. And, just, yeah. a, just a really wonderful, special, special moment.